This video may contain affiliate links and or sponsored advertisement content. Using any affiliate discount codes provided in the video description area or throughout the video content to be used on third-party sites and or clicking on any affiliate links will generate a referral commission to the content creator, Kendra Gilbert. Thank you for your support. Hey guys, it's Kendra Gilbert. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I figured I would go ahead and try a different perspective with my camera. Um, just to kind of, you know, see if this maybe might be a better viewpoint. <laughs> um, it is kind of difficult for me to work on the smaller scale stuff um, with the camera right in front of me. I just, I make too many mistakes. So I'm going to try this and if it works, it works. Um, but in this particular video, I am going to be discussing using CGI for um, making your irises and um, specifically for making um, your irises in my first series silicone base molds. Um, these are the molds that have the rounder fuller um, uh, shape and the flat bottom iris area and uh, the micro texture on the surface. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you, I'm gonna make this pair of eyes actually here on this video. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna actually give you guys a code um, for a discount. So if you watch the video um, and uh, you know you would like these eyes um, and unfortunately the code will only last for so long. So if you're watching this video like days or weeks after I've posted it, then obviously the code's not probably gonna work anymore. Um, but the code will be specifically for um, purchasing uh, uh, through my Etsy shop. It'll be a discount offer. So let's go ahead and get this ball rolling here. But um, first, let me talk to you for a quick sec about digital images. Um, as you can see, I literally have a, a, a photo album here, and, and this is this is not even this is just one of my books um, where I have tons and tons and tons of CGI prints. Um, now, the important thing to remember when you're using CGI is that um, you know the artist that you're getting the prints from. You wanna make sure that you understand their usage rights and you wanna make sure that you honor and respect any of their terms and conditions of use. Um, most of the time, if you're gonna be purchasing um, eyes from an artist online um, for the purposes of you know using them, they're, you know, this, it's going to be completely fine with them for you to, to do exactly that, use them in your finished work. Um, what they don't usually like is the, um, anybody who takes their work and uh, tries to sell the images themselves or pass the, the files around. That's actually kind of really cringy. You should never do that. Um, have good, you know, reform, uh, a good form and respect and courtesy and always pay for what you use and what you take. So um, that is uh, the first <laughs> rule in my book anyway, um, when I am doing this, I always make sure that um, wherever I get my iris uh, printouts, I understand their terms of use and that I actually paid for the, um, the right to use their images. Um, speaking of quality images, um, I'm going to specifically talk about a seller on Etsy. Some of you probably already know him, um, but he has one of the highest quality iris um, digital prints or digital um, files that you can get for printing um, the irises and that is Bob over at Six Dog Arts Collage. I will put his uh, Etsy shop link in the description box below the video. Um, definitely check him out. Um, he has some amazingly cool um, uh, styles and Bob is so cool. I've known um, him through Etsy now for quite a while and he's actually even done custom things for me in the past. Um, he did uh, some really cool stuff for me and uh, I really appreciate him greatly. So here's a huge shout out to Bob. Bob, you rock. <laughs> and um, so here we go. Um, I'm going to select from one of his collections of irises that I like the most. And I'm gonna be making a pair of five millimeter eyes with 2.5 millimeter um, eye bases right here. So um, in the description area in my Etsy listings, you'll see um, I have a table that tells you exactly the right millimeter size iris prints you need to fit my first series molds. So um, if you're gonna do this, um, make sure you take a note of what size you're gonna need if you're gonna do digital. I know a lot of artists don't like digital, 
but um really anything that are that is in these smaller scales that you really want to have like a really hyper realistic um, look um i think digital is important it's an important part of this um, and if it's done correctly it looks great where things go wrong is when you use a low um, quality image um, low resolution image and you try to shrink it down and you're not quite sure what you're doing which is fine because neither do i that's why i outsource all of it to someone who does um, if your printer is not, you know, a really good high, you know, high quality, high resolution printer, if you're printing on the wrong kind of paper, there's so many different factors involved. So I outsource all of my printing and resizing to littlewindows.com. I'll put the link again um, in the description box below. That's also the same shop where I purchase my Brilliant Resin, the two-part epoxy that I use to uh, create the bases, the white bases, and sometimes black bases and other color bases um, for my eyes. Uh, her resin is amazing. It uh, is heat resistant. In other words, you can bake it with polymer clay at clay curing temperatures. Of course, you need to be careful still, but it can be done. I do it constantly all day all long uh, or all day strong all day long. So it does work. I can tell you I've been using it for years now and I love it. Um, so back to prints. Um, all you have to do in order to get uh, Fran at Little Windows to be able to do your printing, you have to send her the file. She does not sell anybody else's work or files. You have to buy your own, pay for your own rights to use them, and send them to her along with your instructions on what size you need. And then she will fill an entire 8.5 by 11 page up full of little irises that you can use, and they're really great quality as long as you give her a quality image to begin with she can usually get them down pretty small. She does prints for me as small as 1.3 millimeters, guys, and they're not too bad, you know? I mean, that's pretty small, and you can still um, see that they're pretty decent quality when they're scaled down. So, yay. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out um, a few of these uh, here, and I'm gonna make a pair. And uh, I'm hoping that you can see, I know the camera's a little bit far away, but I kind of have to have it that way um, because I, I gotta be able to get to my work and uh, to be able to see what I'm doing. Also, if you're gonna use do small scale stuff like this, invest in something like this. Um, I will put the link in the description for this particular um, pair of magnifying um, uh, headlamp glasses, whatever you want to call them. Um, and these, I like this, it has with a little battery pack on the back. Um, it's relatively lightweight considering, and um, it does, it gives you a nice light and a really good mag magnification, which you will definitely need in order to do this. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and pick out a nice print to use. And I, I'll try to um, zoom in here in a little bit, but for this, I need to have it kind of away from me. Um, all right. So how about we go with... Um, I have to pick something that you'll be able to see, too. How about these really pretty um, blue ones here? What I do is I will cut... I will actually cut um, these out in like little squares. Um, I don't try to actually cut them out perfectly from the actual swatch of eyes. Um, I will cut them out in basic shape like this. And then I'll get um, more detailed with my cutting after. Let me find the other one. <laughs> You can use any kind of digital image. Um, I use bottle cap art sometimes to create cool designs. Um, I, you know, there's, there's really, there's so much scope for the imagination with this. And if you're a digital artist, you know, you can make your own. Cause that, that's one of the things I think that bothers some artists is that they're like, well, CGI is kind of cheating because, you know, you don't know how many other people have that particular design. And I'm here to tell you, you guys, it doesn't really matter. It really does not matter. Um, because when it comes to this here, no one's gonna, there's so many different designs, colors, varieties out there. 
it would be really impossible for anybody to even really go, oh, I saw those same exact eyes in, over here. You know, it's it's almost impossible to even consider that as, a, as an issue. Um, the other issue is, is that I think a lot of times people, when they try to do CGI, they're not using a high quality resolution image and they're trying to print it themselves. Um, and you can see that it's like pixelated and grainy and, and stuff um, when you look at them. I know that sometimes is a turnoff. Um, I personally have liked that, that kind of grainy effect um, and some of my um, like art eyes that I do that are a little bit less realistic and more like you know pop art or, or different types of art because it, it looks cool. It almost looks like fiber. So really just play around with it and see what happens um, and uh, have some fun, you know? And don't worry so much. Don't listen to what other people say a whole lot. Just, you know, experiment and do things your own way. Um, and uh, a lot of times you'll, you'll see that people really do appreciate um, different things and um, you know, and at the end of the day, if they don't, if they really don't like digital images, um, then, then they don't. And then, so you've got the hand painted stuff, so it's all good. So when you're cutting these out, you want to make sure that you get as much of that white paper off as you possibly can without cutting into the dark limbal ring. You can use, um, one of those leather punchers that come in those tiny um, sizes, but I will tell you they're not as easy to use as you think. Um, to get that circle just perfectly right over the top and then have it perfectly match up to the size, it's almost impossible. So I always go to my scissors. It takes a little bit more time and effort, but it's kind of worth it, honestly. So, um, and I use these guys, I use sewing scissors because they're just, I don't know, I think that they're just a little bit better and easier to use. So I'm just cutting as close as I can around that limbal ring to get as close as possible without cutting into it. I don't want anything to damage it. It looks really bad if you cut into the limbal ring. It just looks choppy. You can tell that they're cut. So that's the whole thing is you want to be able to use CGI, but you don't want it to be really recognizable as CGI. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm just going to stick those there. Um, so let me show you something. Now, if you're using a piece of paper or stock or what, depending on what you um, do this with. Now, Little Windows, they she uses, um, she offers. She offers either a... Um, uh, one of these, it's like a resin paper. It's actually very, very good for resin use. Um, and it's archival and it, you know, you get really good high quality uh, prints on it. She actually sells the paper by itself. So you could just buy the paper and do your own prints if you have a quality printer and you know what you're doing. So you can just buy the paper too. Um, she also offers an acetate film, which is a clear transparency film. I don't suggest that if you're doing your little tiny, tiny eyes like we're doing today, only because <laughs> to be able to see with a clear background, it's almost near impossible. I mean, it, it'll drive you crazy. So I don't try to do the acetate on anything that's less than like say, um, uh, you know, like five millimeters. It, it just, it gets really, really hard to do. But because you can see the UV light through this paper, then you know that you can use UV resin underneath as a sealant or an adhesive. So um, that's a good thing um, because it makes it a little bit easier when you're putting your digital print down inside of your eye base. So what I'm going to do, um, because I want my eyes to be able to go in the oven, I am going to be using Xiao Xiao DIY UV Resin Hard. This is the product that I have been using now for years um, that I find to be the most heat stable um, out there. Um, it comes in a bottle that usually looks like this, but um, this is the English version that um, Judy at Oak Artist Emporium was nice enough to um, get for us. 
Um, I asked her if she would start carrying this because uh, my tutorials and everything um, always suggested it and I always had to send people off to some strange place to get it. Um, so this is uh, available on her website. It's extremely affordable. You get a nice good 60 gram bottle of it. Um, I think for like maybe eight bucks, something like that. So it's affordable and it works really, really well. So there's that. Now, if I'm not going to be baking, um, this is my second favorite. Um, I love Patico products, you guys. I just love their resin. Most of your very, very well-known ball joint doll artists will use Patico. Um, I mean, it, it's just a really, really good um, Japanese uh, product, and it works wonderful. And it also will take heat. I will tell you I've done it time and time again, and I, I really honestly have not seen any issues with it. But because I have more experience and time um, using uh, UV resin hard, I just do this just in case for um, anything I know that's going to be going into a bakeable heat environment. But Patico is amazing. Another cool thing is that you can get the colorants, the Patico pigments, um, which I love. They've got these in uh, transparent colors and also in opaque colors. Um, I have a favorite Etsy shop that I get my Patico products from and it's the uh, uh, Snap Jewelry Shop. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, their shop is awesome, lightning fast shipping, and I always get um, a great deal and even a little gift usually with my order. So thank you Snap Shop or Snap Jewelry Shop. <laughs> so I will put their link in the uh, description as well. And you can actually use their pigments with UV resin hard too. So um, that's also a plus. All right, so enough jib jabbing. I'm going to um, take my little silicone pad here. I already have a little bit, but I think that's Patico. So um, I'm using UV resin hard this time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put UV resin hard on the side. And then I usually um, take a little bit of a tool. You're gonna see me working today without gloves. Um, I do not suggest that you do this if you have a hard time keeping things off your skin. You really don't want any kind of epoxy to get on your skin. I don't care if it's safe or not. I don't, I don't care. You should not get anything chemical based on your skin. It's not good. So um, if you are, have any kind of doubt at all that you could get some of this on your hands, then just don't. But when I'm working really small, scale like this, um, I tend to really struggle if I don't, if I have gloves on. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and hopefully my camera will readjust. Um, I'm just going to put a small amount of the UV resin hard into my eye base. Then I'm going to grab my print and I'm going to place it over the top. Okay, and like I said, because I don't have gloves, I gotta do this part with a napkin um, in front of me. Sorry, um, and I'm just gonna shove it. Once it gets to the point where it's like right there, then you can just take your tool and push it down inside the rest of the way. Don't get confused on the backside of um, these eye bases, you'll see this little divot that's not really where you're supposed to be at. You're supposed to be where the flat um, resin area is. Don't use a sharp tool for this because if you cut into your image, it'll show up really badly later on when you amplify it with the resin dome. So I use like this blunt pointy tool. So there's the first one. I'm gonna set it to the side. Do not cure anything yet. <laughs> okay. Again, I'm just gonna stick some of that in there. Grab my print and it's not wanting to come off my silicone. Okay. And I'm gonna, oops. Come on, there we go. You just gotta lay it over. And I did get a little bit on me, but I can't do this uh, <laughs> with it right there in my face. 
with gloves. Too difficult. All right, so push that down. You wanna make sure you get a really nice, good seated position because if you trap air underneath your print, you'll end up with bubbles and that is a big no-no. Okay, I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of resin on the top just to kind of help seal the deal there. I don't cure yet. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm gonna put a little tiny drop of resin on the top. Do not fill it up, not yet. You wanna do this in layers. Okay. All right, so there we go. Um, now I'm just gonna look very closely um, using my magnifying lamp to see if I see any bubbles, which more than likely you will always see bubbles. Um, a lot of times people will use these guys um, or a torch or something, I'll even use them, but not for this because the, the heat can't get down inside the base well enough to remove bubbles and you're just gonna waste your time, it won't work. What you're gonna have to do is go in with a brush and basically go on a search and destroy mission. <laughs> So um, I'm just gonna go in here and brushes work really good at grabbing hold of the air bubbles and pulling them out. Just have a clean piece of uh, paper towel to wipe your brush off every time because if you don't, you'll just reintroduce the bubbles right back. I'm gonna go ahead and back the camera out. So you can see, I'm just gonna put these underneath my Melody Susie. to give that a quick curing. Here's one eye here I did a few minutes ago, so. All right. This is, this is a really pretty um, digital image. Um, it's one of my favorites of Bob's. It's a really pretty, like a, a turquoise blue mixed with a darker blue. It's dark and it's bold. It's a really pretty, eye um, and it shows up really nicely on camera when you take photos of it and the other reason why I do this in layers is if I do get a bubble a lot of times it'll be trapped in a layer that is closer to the top and not you know it's like if you if you do this in layers then if you do get a bubble it's um, easier to kind of go in there. Um, I will dig the bubble out if I don't want to start all over again, like if it's a pair of eyes I really, really love. I will go in there and I will surgically remove the bottle, uh, the bubble uh, with a um, X-Acto blade, um, with a pin, whatever I have to do to break that bubble open and out and like dig it out. Then I will use a sander pad like this and sand the uh, resin down again clean it off really nice and then I will reapply a coat of resin to fill in the gouge or the or the scrape or whatever you know is there and cure that and that usually will save your work so if you get a bubble try not to freak out too badly <laughs> um, and honestly not all bubbles are necessarily you know bad I I don't like the ones that are near my pupils I think that when you get micro bubbles near your pupil that's where it kind of looks a little bit weird unless I'm doing hand painted eyes or fantasy eyes and the bubbles add to the mystery and the um, just the uniqueness of the eye, then I don't, I kind of welcome them at that point because it's part of that handmade quality and uniqueness that you get with doing this this way. So um, a lot of artists, if you go and you look at their uh, listings on Etsy, they'll tell you um, that, you know, there's flaws and stuff like that. And I mean, I do the same thing. Um, you know, it's just par for the course, but um, I would never sell a pair of eyes that had a big nasty bubble or something in it that, you know, I'm, I'm super picky myself. So if it's something that I personally couldn't live with, I don't expect anybody else to. So I'm not gonna even try to sell anybody something like that. It's just, I, I do have some integrity. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna look at these guys real quick up close to see the result and so far so good that one's good that one's good and you know what I have forgotten a very important thing that I normally do not forget if you're using any kind of UV light 
you want to protect your eyes. So invest in a pair of blue blockers. These will act, um, you know, keep the UV light from being really harsh on your eyes. It's really important um, to be safe when you do stuff like this. All right, so being that I'm happy with this layer, now I'm gonna turn around and put another layer. Um, and I'm gonna go in the same way, put me a little tiny dab in there. One thing I didn't mention, which I should have mentioned, um, you can also enhance your CGI uh, images, your your uh, your prints. Sometimes I'll enhance the pupil by putting a small dot of black resin over the pupil. Ooh, you can't see over the black um, pupil. Let me go ahead and pull this in a little bit and dip it down a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, sometimes I I will do that as well. Um, I'll put like a small dot of black resin right over the pupil um, and cure it. Um, that way the, the pupil just stands out a little bit more or it seems more like it's 3D. Um, sometimes I'll put some colored resin in there. Sometimes I'll put some micro um, powder or pigment to make it shimmery. Um, there's so many different things that you can do with CGI to kind of like make it even better and more unique. Um, it's really kind of fun. I, I really like doing CGI. Um, it is easier in a lot of ways than hand painting. It's, you know, anybody can literally um, do this. It doesn't really take a whole lot of, um, like, you know, I mean, yeah, you got to have basic um, skills and stuff like that to, to work with different things. But um, it, this is really a very simple thing to do. Um, so you can have amazingly cool looking eyes without having a whole lot of like other types of, of skill. So um, that's also fun too. So if, if, it, if it looks intimidating, it, don't let it intimidate because it's very, very simple. If you can cut it out, if you can put it in there, you know, it's, it's, it's simple. Somebody else has already done the majority of the hard part and that's the creation of the image. So I don't even like to take credit fully for CGI images because I'm not the one that did the design. Another artist did. Um, what I charge for is um, my ability to, to do it really, really well so that it doesn't really look like CGI. Now there's sometimes when I make eyes with, you know, um, words or, you know, if I'm doing a ball joint doll eye and um, I want it to, you know, just be like a, I call it kind of more, more like a um, like an art eye, something really crazy and off the wall. Um, that's, that's a little different. <laughs> All right. I'm just waiting for those eyes to cure. And there we go. I'm just going to check them and see if I got any bubbles to take out. Nope. We are still pretty good. There might be one tiny little bubble right there, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's not in a bad position. So all right, onward to the next layer. And I will continue to do this until um, I have uh, the base pretty much filled up. And I think that is pretty much the final layer right there. I'm sorry I keep hitting the camera with my magnifying glass here, my lamp. lamp. I think this right here, this final layer is where we're at. And then we can dump. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check one more time for bubbles. Throw these under my lamp. Yep, I don't see anything. Just, uh, just be patient with this process. If you're patient and you don't get ahead of yourself and you really, and this is the other reason why I love UV resin because if I had to wait for epoxy, <laughs> to cure every time I did a layer, I would go insane. So I love epoxy resin. I love brilliant resin, but I just hate waiting for 12 hours or, you know, half the time just so that I can do layers. And I just, I, I don't have patience for that. And, you know, when I'm making eyes, um, the eye bases themselves are, are really cool. Um, uh, to, you know, with the two part epoxy, you can do all kinds of crazy designs and stuff. 
Um, so I don't mind necessarily because I create these usually at night and in the morning I wake up and I unmold them and it's it's kind of fun. I, I enjoy it with my cup of coffee, I'm, you know, unmolding my eye bases. Um, but when it comes to the actual creation of the iris, I like I like instant gratification. And I like to be able to freeze my results immediately. I don't like waiting to see maybe if a bubble rises up, you know, after two or three hours or whatever. And yeah, you can use a pressure pot, but I just, I don't know. I just, I prefer, these products work so well together. They marry up so good together. I just don't see the reason why I should um, change. So I just, I, I prefer it. You might not. You might want to do two-part epoxy for the whole eye, but me, I just, I think UV resin is where to, where to, where it's at. Okay, so here we go. See, it's pretty much all the way filled up through the top. Now I am confident to dome it. Um, now to dome, I will usually use my little cork corks with some ticky tack. So let me go ahead and get this ready to go. Sometimes you have to fight to get the ticky tack to stick. Uh oh, where did it go? Looks like boogers. <laughs> Dirty boogers! All right. Don't make it so thick that when you push your eye down in there though, that it like, you bury your eye base because you wanna coat these also, so I just put them down so that they're relatively on there pretty good, but I don't like cover them. And I like to try to keep them even if I can, because it helps me when I'm doming to keep my domes somewhat um, even. All right, so that's pretty good here. All right, so now make sure that your tool, whatever you're gonna be using to dome is super clean, because this is where lint and other things go wrong, I swear, you know, they talk about the screw up fairy or whatever. Well, there is definitely one that flies around my studio that likes to mess with my, my final domes. So <laughs> I am super, super on it. Um, so go ahead and grab some. Not too much, because you don't want it to overflow. Um, but grab some resin. And I'm gonna try to see if I can get close here without getting in your way. And just tap and gently lift up. Tap and gently lift up. Okay, see where you're at. If you need a little bit more, you can usually get away with adding some more. Tap and tap. You can pull the resin around with your tool to kind of get it to go where you want it to go if it's a little wonky. So I'm going to um, hold it upside down now for myself. You might not be able to see what I'm doing here very uh, well, but I have to hold it upside down just to see, it kind of helps me give another perspective to make sure my domes are around the same height. They appear to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these underneath my lamp. I am happy with them so far. They seem to be pretty uniform. So let me go ahead and pop those underneath. And even when you don't see anything wrong, <laughs> I'm gonna swear to God, <laughs> you will swear that there was nothing wrong when you first started or when you went to go to do it and then all of a sudden something will happen. Now this one granted, okay, so, so I don't, here, let me spare you by looking at my nasty fingers. All right, so let me see if I can't <laughs> zoom in on this. Let me see. Ooh, come on. I'm gonna see if I can't get it. There we go. Okay, so when I first started with this eye, um, it, everything was going great, but I got lazy. And so I decided that I was going to try to skip 
a very important step and I was just going to fill the entire base up. That's when you'll get this thing that I call, it's, this is me, it's called fracturing. The curing of the resin happens so fast that it literally fractures and like pulls away from your resin print, or excuse me, from your, um, from your, uh, your digital image and it will fracture. And that's what happened with this one. I don't even know if you can see it, but I can see it. Um, and I would never sell a pair of eyes that I saw that happen with because it's just, it's it just, I don't like it. Um, sometimes it actually makes like a cool effect, um, like glass or, or something. But if I see that before a pair of eyes goes out, then I'll either redo the eyes or I won't ship them. You know, I'll, I'll figure out something else, but um, that will happen. And that's usually because you um, you decided to skip a step and you decided to go too fast. I don't even think that the, the camera is even picking this up. But trust me when I say there's a fracture, I'm trying to see if I can get the light to hit it. That might be it there. But you'll you'll see that happen sometimes. The fact that you probably would not see most of these issues um, with the naked eye. I think that's it right there. Not the not the circle that's for my LED light ring, but that other um, spot down there. I think that's it there. Um, honestly, you're not. You probably would never even notice if you put this into your work and you just you know rolled with it. But um, I'm I'm so picky, you guys. I'm. You have no idea. <laughs> It's, it's almost uh, an illness. Um, okay, here we go. I just pulled these out. They look nice. I'll show you. Um, dome height is also a preference. It doesn't, there's no right or wrong in my opinion. Obviously, if you make them ridiculously um, high, um, I, I call those, uh, um, like, they, they, I don't know, they just look weird if they're too high. Like, they're not natural. Um, I like a medium to lower dome, but I don't really like too low of domes either because then that you lose your depth. But that's about where I like to keep it. All right, so now let's talk about eye coating. If you wanted to make these hyper realistic, in the very beginning, before you even start with anything, you should probably sand off some of the texture. I'm not gonna lie, I would definitely do that. I would sand some of the texture off so that you could um, you know, get your veins on there. Um, because it, you know, if, if you're going to do hyper realistic, a lot of times veins really help with that. I do not use fibers when I do hyper realistic eyes this small. It looks weird. The scale is completely off. It just looks like pieces of, I don't know. I just think it looks awful. So I don't use fibers on my little tiny eyes. Um, what I do is I hand draw them with a colored pencil um, in the color that, you know, vein that I want. Sometimes I'll use more than one color. I will lightly draw, drag my colored pencil and make sure you have a really fine, fine tip point. You want very, very tight. Uh, that's not even good enough, honestly. It's kind of dull for this. But you want to make a very, very fine, fine light line. And you just want to kind of do your little swiggles and stuff like this on the surface um, and then when you coat that the resin kind of helps to I don't know it, it kind of makes it look wet and realistic so I like using my colored pencils for that and these eye bases are perfect for this um, because you know they don't have that real smooth surface like a regular ball joint doll eye you know has without I mean that's how it comes out of the mold I could have made these that way easily, but we just decided to leave the texture because it just works better, I, I think, at this scale. Um, obviously, I designed my eye base molds to, you know, to try to accommodate everyone, but really, this was my baby, and um, I kind of made it the way that I wanted, so I left the texture on there, um, and it, it it does it does help. It does help. All right, so uh, let's talk about finishing the eye. You can just use regular um, UV resin to just coat it, um, clear UV resin to coat it. Um, before you do anything, you wanna look really close. 
and make sure that they're super clean. You don't want to trap anything in between any of those lines, any lint, uh, anything like that. You want to make sure they're really clean and really white. Um, and yeah, then just coat around. Um, one of the things that I kind of has started doing, which I think kind of brightens it up even more, and this is totally up to you. Um, I will take some of my white opaque pigment. This is the opaque here. Um, this is from Snap um, Jewelry Shop on Etsy. Take this, um, you know, go easy on it. You don't want it too, you know, if you use too much pigment, it, it, it won't cure properly. Um, but you might just have to just let it also cure a little bit longer. Um, but uh, use this to coat your eye. So um, try not to get any on the lens. You might want to do this. If you know what you want to do for your bases before, you might want to do this before you even actually create your iris. That way you don't run the risk of actually getting any of this on to your lens, but you just want to get up there. And I like from working from the bottom up because those lines help to grab hold of the resin and pull and pulls it in where I want it. Now, anytime that you use white anything or a pale color, you, you know, out, over time, you do have to expect that if you, you know, expose it to a lot of sunlight or if you don't, you know, hold it or handle it properly or whatever, I'm sorry, I'm off screen again, dang, I'm sorry, um, that it will discolor. But Patico, it, the star drop is what I use, the star drop, because um, it has the highest non-yellowing rating out of all of them. It is better than their moon drop as far as yellowing. You can find that information on the, the uh, Patico website. A lot of it is, um, they do translate it to English. So um, you'll see that their Star Drop product is um, superior when it comes to um, their, you know, non-yellowing. But you still have to take um, precautions and stuff not to do anything to um, cause it to yellow. Oxidation from things like oxygen, you know, uh, heat will sometimes cause it you know there's a lot of different things um also if you keep it free of like oils in your skin like from touching the lenses a lot of times when you see unboxings um for resin eyes you'll see the person wearing gloves which i agree you should not try to touch them too much and they look really, really nice. This is a really beautiful pair. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and slide these into my oven. Now, for something like this, I will normally give a little bit of a hit with my barbecue lighter. That'll help bust any bubbles that might be on the surface. And you might wanna do two layers, um, but keep your layers thin. Keep your layers thin. That always helps. So I'm just letting that cure. Your final cure on your resin, your final cure, you want to make sure that you leave it under your light long enough to where you do not feel it is tacky. I like to be able to like rub my finger like this and not feel any kind of tackiness when I do that. I also will do this and if I look at it in the mirror and I see my fingerprint or like a greasy mark, I know that the, the resin is not fully cured. You, you should not see any kind of like greasy mark when you touch your resin eye. Like, like see, look at this one. That is wonderfully cured right there, perfectly cured. You want your finger to not feel any kind of stickiness or tackiness, and when you touch it, you know, don't just stick your thumb on there. You don't want to do that, but just on the side. 
um, where you can like kind of just recode it if you have to. Just stick your finger on there and see if there's any kind of um, residue that um, comes off onto the lens or the uh, the side easy like that. Then uh, then you know it's not ready. All right, so I'm going to add another layer here. I'm make sure it's very nicely coated. Oop, it's gonna use clear. Use some of this. Um, all right, let me see where I'm at. I thought I saw a spot here that needed to be redone. See, and this, this is the other thing um, about the texture. If I didn't have that texture there, this part would be so much more difficult because your coatings would want to just kind of pull away and not stick. And that was one of the things I was getting frustrated with was like, you know, trying to get coatings and... Um, whatever to, to, you know, stick and my hyper realistic eyes, you know, you can't really draw, um, your veins and I couldn't get the same effect that I wanted with paint for veins. I needed to be able to draw them. So in order to draw on a surface, it needs to be somewhat rough and not as slick. So a lot of reasons, a lot of, a lot went into the creation of these. I'm really happy with these. I think they look great. Um, again, I'm going to put these underneath my um, light here and I'm going to let them cure a little bit more. And that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Um, remember, uh, if you're going to, you know, use digital images, um, check out the image uh, resizing and printing services uh, services of little windows I use her services exclusively um, for my printing needs and for um, like my editing um, for size um, uh, yeah she's wonderful and um, if you use my code Virgos 15 you'll get a 15% discount on everything in her store it doesn't matter if it's printing if it's resin if it's supplies it doesn't matter just use Virgos 15 at checkout or click my link in the description box below and you'll automatically have that discount applied to your order. And 15% adds up, it's uh, pretty nice. And there is no expiration code on that code. Um, so you can use it every time you shop and save um, some good money. So um, yeah, it's a good way to go. And uh, Bob over at uh, Six Dog Arts Collage, um, his pricing is very, very reasonable for what you get. Um, you know, it's a few dollars for some amazing digital art uh, prints. You, he's got fantasy style um, eyes. He's got um, realistic style eyes. He's got um, um, heart pupils. And uh, that was one of the requests that I um, had. So um, he has the, um, the fantasy eyes. Um, He's just really, really great. And obviously the larger the iris, the more detail and the more you know beautiful it will be. But um, for the smaller scale stuff, it works really, really well. And he's helped me take my CGI eyes to the next level. And for that, I am very grateful. So there they go. I will go ahead and put a discount code and I'm going to put these on sale um, on Etsy. Um, so that you will be able to purchase them if you would like. All right, let me see if I can get a little closer. My lighting isn't the greatest today. I'll take some better pictures and better lighting and put them at the end of the video. All right, guys, take care. Thanks for watching.